Yeah, a, f a couple of years ago, I got asked to work on an app, uh, actually for the company I'm working for now, uh, Swimtopia. Uh, the app was brand new Greenfield app. We we're going to build an app to run swim meets. And it turns out running swim meets is super complicated. Um, it's a complicated problem space. And part of that comp complication is that there's a lot of paper involved. Like you end up printing a lot of things. You print heat sheets, psych sheets, timer sheets, result, like award labels, results, like there's over a dozen different reports you got to print. And on top of that, like um, the reports, like each of them requires a lot of customization because there's literally supporting thousands of swim teams with, you know, dozens of volunteers on each team. So you have all these humans, they all have an idea about the types of things they want out of their reports and structure. So the requirement basically was build uh, part of part of the app, just one piece of the app was to build these reports that have, that have a lot of customization that are going to get frequent, you know, re requests. So they're going to be changing a lot. So it had to be built in a way that was like easy to customize, easy to maintain. Uh, the other challenge with this is that it was going to be both a web app and a windows installed app so that it can integrate with some other software. So it had to work in both places. Uh, and the challenges just kept coming like the, and then the last one was that like it had to work in scenarios where you had like really spotty internet and eventually it needs to be able to work fully offline. So in the past when I'd had this problem to build like nice looking reports, I'd always reach for like server side solutions because it's really hard to control print layout from a browser because all the browsers implement their specs differently and page breaks are nasty and you can't do headers and footers and like, there's just all these things that are really hard to do if you're printing from the web. But I thought we've got Ember, this is an Ember app. Um, maybe we can do it, maybe I can do it different this time. And so <clears throat> um, what I ended up doing is building um, an add-on that I haven't really gone public with until now because there was no docs. <laughs> And that's what I'm gonna share with you guys tonight is the add-on, it's called Printable Pages. Um, and the, here it is. So, I don't know if I can shrink that down, I can, great. Uh, so it's on GitHub, it's called Ember Printable Pages. And the goal of it is to make creating like beautiful printable documents, easy to build and easy to maintain. <clears throat> and so uh, as I said, I finally got some docs up. So here they are, hooray. Um, the, the homepage of the docs kind of highlights some of, some of those goals that I had, right? Uh, obviously they need, they need to be printable. Um, uh, another big goal was that I wanted like brand consistency. Uh, with the server-side solutions, you often end up breaking brand consistency because you can't reuse your client-side components in your server code, uh, particularly in the server like PDF generator libraries. and so. Uh, I wanted that brand consistency. Uh, the other thing, because my particular use case required a lot of user customization, I wanted them to be able to see a, like a live in-browser preview as they made their changes to their configuration. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted, after having used those server-side libraries, I wanted something that was a lot more maintainable. Often what happened with the server libraries is you use them to create a PDF and then it's almost entirely untested and you end up with re re unexpected regressions and all the problems that comes with not having tested code. And so I wanted something that was easy to test. Uh, and I think after two years of using this, like I've achieved uh, those goals with this library and it's, it's been uh, pretty great to use. So uh, on the right here, there's a little demo. This is not a PDF. Uh, it is just a, it is just HTML. Uh, and it gives you kind of a feel of what you can do with the library in a very simple case. Like you get uh, page headers, you get page footers, and you have access to page numbers. You can render like big uh, sections that have just a big, you know, kind of one big block, or you can render sections that have repeating content that are put into columns. And what the, what Printable Pages does for you is you, you know, using handlebars, declare the the content that you want to have. And then it figures out how to lay it out for you and figures out where the page break should be. And so in this case, um, I gave it a, an array of items that I wanted to render. And you could imagine each of these being a component and then printable pages figured out that 39 of them would fit on page one and the rest of them would fit on page two. And so 
um, if uh, that doesn't quite make sense yet, if the power does, doesn't quite make sense yet, like just hang in there with me, I'll, I'll do a demo and you can look at the code and you maybe it'll start to click. But um, so for a little bit broader demo, here's another document. It's a little, a little bit similar to the first one. Um, there's more pages in this one. Um, there's also multiple chapters to this document. Um, and it has a little settings bar over here. And so you'll notice as I change like the number of columns, the, uh, <clears throat> the document is automatically re-rendering. You can see at the upper right here, it's uh, just cause it's a, you know, a demo app, I'm saying how long it takes to render all the pages. But one of the things you'll notice is that it instantly renders the first page and then it progressively renders subsequent pages. So even if you have a really large document with something like, you know, 3,000 items in it, and it takes a long time to render all of it out, the user still immediately sees uh, something on the screen, and so it doesn't feel so burdensome to, to build all that content up on the fly for them. Uh, <clears throat> and so, um, anyway, so that's kind of a fun little demo, but I, you know, it is called printable pages for a reason, so if I hit command P, and we load up the browser preview, boom, there it is. There's the, there's the printable pages with the same sensible page breaks that we had, um, uh, that we saw in our live preview. Uh, so, um, I don't know, you might look at that and say like, maybe, you know, try to imagine what the code would be like behind that. And it's actually uh, pretty simple. So you install it with just a simple, you know, standard Ember install command. And then that gives you access to a printable pages component. Uh, and it yields out um, a document. And then a document can have, um, you know, maybe a title page. So there's a title page component that I'm not demoing here, but, uh, and then it can have many chapters. And so you just define a chapter. And then within a chapter, you can define for that chapter, what do you want the page header to be? And you can put your page header co component in here. You can define what you want your page footer to be and put content or component here. And then you can define however many sections you wanna have in that area. And then Printable Pages is gonna take that and it's gonna figure out how to lay those sections out so that they don't uh, break oddly in the middle of a section. And if you, if you have repeating content, uh, the section component is an iterator and you can give it an array of data and then it's gonna yield uh, one by one items out of that array along with an optional index as a second um, prop into the block and then you can render whatever content or components you'd like to for each section and so you notice like this iterator behavior is a lot like the ember each iterator so it should be pretty familiar to uh, ember developers uh, and then lastly if you do have uh, multiple columns you want to have a column layout you can give uh, the section component a column uh, count prop to specify how many columns you'd like it to have. And so from a conceptual model, I, I, I was pretty happy with how this turned out. You have, print, you define a printable pages component that gives you a document. You, inside that you have many chapters and then inside the chapter you can define your headers and footers and your sections. And that's all you gotta think about. That's all you gotta worry about. Printable pages takes care of the rest and figures out how to lay it all out. Uh, and so, for me and the app that I've had to build, like this has saved me an enormous amount of time and it allows like um, making changes to it and customizations to it, uh, they, they can happen really fast. So for example, one of the team, a, a number of the teams wanted us to be able to add into the footer uh, a, a full width banner that was like a, a graphic of the sponsors of the teams, of the companies that are sponsoring that team. And it literally took like 15 minutes to make a, a banner component and then add it to the component, add it to the page footer, add a test, and then that sh we shipped it. Like that's all it took. Uh, and so like the, you know, the business value you can deliver in making printable page and making pages that are printable out of your Ember app with the amount of time that you spend, like that balance is, it feels really nice uh, in my use of this. Uh, so if you're saying that, in the back of your head, like that demo is not super great. Like all your items are the same size. Uh, how, you know, why do we really need a whole add-on for this? Well, 
the point is that your sections can be of any size. Uh, they could be like random height or not known until they're rendered. And so I wanted to demo that for you. So I, I tweak this page to give each item uh, kind of a random padding. So they're all different sizes. Uh, and so that's what this example is here. Uh, and so you can see it's the same stuff, but all the items have different sizes. Uh, and so if I just, you know, reload the page and they get their different paddings, you can see there's a different number of items from section two that fit uh, on the first page every time. And every time printable pages just figures out like, these are how many things will fit on page one and then I'll continue on to rendering page two. And then I'll give you a nice page break and you'll have your second chapter. And so um, uh, I think that that helps highlight, you know, kind of the power of what it does for you and what it, what it makes easy. Um, but I can show you even kind of more advanced uses. So this is uh, Meet Maestro. It's the Swim, Swim Meet uh, app that Swimtopia uh, has built. Um, and, you know, here's a, here's a flavor of all the different kinds of reports that we generate. Uh, each of them have a bunch of customizations to them. And uh, so here, for example, is uh, an example heat sheet. And so you can see in this heat sheet, this is kind of a truncated meat. There's not very many age groups in it, but even in this small meat, there's 19 pages worth of worth of content. Um, and you can see it's got like, you know, a nice informational header that's got page numbers, it's got a footer. Um, in the footer here is where that like uh, sponsor banner might pop in. Uh, and when you add the sponsor banner, if like in this page, right, where it would clip out the bottom heat here, like printable pages would just move that to the next page for you. Uh, you don't even have to think about it. Uh, but the thing that's really fun about this is if you open up the options, you can now like, you can come in here and some users want heat sheets with, um, in a single column format or a dual column or with three columns and they get to see what it looks like here. Uh, some of them like to hide the entry time so you don't know what your competitor is doing at the moment, I guess, or you can add uh, estimated start times for the heats, um, or you just want to print off. Uh, I just want to see the heat sheet for my team. I don't want to see the other teams. Anyway, any rate, tons of customization. You can change which records display. Uh, and you can see, um, uh, change, you know, you can see the records changing there. And I, I don't know, it's a nice user experience. Um, and when you're ready to print again, you can just provide the user with a print button or they can go file print or they can hit command P, whichever way they prefer to get to the print menu, but there it is. I mean, it's what you see on rendered in your preview is what you get when you go to print. Um, and that's um, a pretty nice experience. So um, the other thing I'll say is um, related to the progressive um, display, is this an example of timer sheets? And they can get really large, like hundreds, hundreds of pages, and we're able to uh, successfully, you know, provide a good experience using printable pages for that type of scenario as well. So, at any rate, that's um, that's printable pages. Um, this is kind of the first time putting it out in the public, and uh, I'm excited. I don't know. Hopefully, folks can give it a try, give us feedback, see if it meets uh, some of their edge cases. Um, that's the deal. Anybody have questions? Yeah, I wanted to say, first of all, amazing. Right. Thank you for creating this. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about how to pitch it to my team so that we can spend less time fidgeting with print styles. Yeah. So, uh, you, so what we do a lot of times, we have a lot of tabular data. Uh -huh. And then we try to finagle that into something that prints not terribly. Yep. So typically users manipulate, uh, they manipulate the page, the table in such a way that they see exactly what they want to see. And mm -hmm. then it gets in this very interactive, visually pleasing uh, way. And then they click print and we want to give them something. These examples seem more like what you see is what you get from the, like this page right here, you're able to manipulate it directly. Um, so I guess what I'm getting at is, do you have any use cases where it's gone from like one visual style to another? Mm. That makes sense. Sure. Uh, yeah, I think in that case, uh, you could, 
give them a print button that then takes the visual thing that they saw there and then it shows and then it renders this for them and then they can they can print like you could you could do a step like that um uh so i don't know that might be how i tried to solve that um it sounds like basically your uh your configuration screen like your show options is this huge screen that's you're manipulating all the things inside of it um and you don't you know so i don't know i might try to do something like that and just play play with it and see if that works for you um it's conceptually like pretty easy to to use and to like to go uh to go do a spike on it because like this is conceptually all that you're really thinking about when you're when you're building this so you're putting stuff in the sections that you you want to avoid having a page break in the middle of them um and then there there is um there uh, um <clears throat> there are properties yielded into the section block that i don't have documented yet <laughs> um but it allows you to do stuff like uh where was um like in my demo here like i have section one continued right or it's the same thing i think in the heat sheets if a heat sheet um can render like a special section header if it's the first element in the array it renders that otherwise it doesn't uh and so at any rate there's it's conceptually pretty simple i think to give to do a spike on like letting them configure your page and then popping them over to another page that uh put your content in this structure I, I would say also especially if if they're you're using ember to for the for the page that they're using to configure the whole kind of table with anyway like if that table is being rendered as a part of of ember um you know there's there's probably some component reuse um that you basically just take the components from that from that page and put them in this printable pages kind of page preview right it's basically what he's talking about is like you click print and this gives you the print preview and then, and then maybe you open the print dialogue immediately or whatever. But, uh, mm -hmm. but I, I would think that you could probably have some component reuse between those two pages. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'll try to put together a spike. It sounds awesome. Cool. Yeah. Love some, love some feedback there. I mean, there are some limitations to it. I've started writing some of them out here. Uh, like IE is sorry. If you need to support IE, just don't, <laughs> um there's some other limitations in that like um you really need um it, for performance reasons it's more ideal if you have all the data downloaded and you can render everything out at once like having components that render in and then go fetch data and then change in shape and or size after you put them in the page like you're gonna the performance is not going to be great unless it's like a really short document um and uh any anyway, rate, there's a few other things I, i'll need to kind of beef out the limitations here my cookbook section is also all uh to do's so that will happen soon but the more questions i get the more i will start filling that be forced to start filling that in so how do you do them go how, how, do, you do, how do you do the math and like the the sizing i'm curious like do you support uh, European um, paper sizes out of the box? Uh, it's it's in the it's in the roadmap to add ver various paper sizes. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the way it works under the hood, uh, and I, it's not going to be hard to add them. I just haven't uh, needed to yet. But the way it works under the hood is it it actually um, uh, kind of chapter by. Well, it renders chapters in parallel, but within a chapter, it drops a section into a page, sees mm -hmm. if it fits, drops the next one, sees if it fits, and then it starts to get a feel for, um, you know, documents like uh, the original demo where they're all the same size. If it senses they're all roughly in the same size, then it starts guessing how many are going to fit on a page. And so you'll see it, like, if you could slow it down, you'd see it render one, one item, the second item, and then a whole bunch of items. And any of them that don't fit on the page, then it lifts and goes to the next page. And so it kind of progressively goes goes page by page like that. Um, and then if any moment, like one of the components does grow after you've rendered a page and it pushes something off the page, then it's gonna bump all that down page by page by page, which is where you hit like bad performance problems. Um, so uh, anyway, so there's, it's not trying to, 
pre-render things and then calculate math to get it all to fit in there. It's really just leaning on like the, the layout in the browser and then saying, okay, did you fit in the page container or not? Um, that's how it's making decisions. Can you tell us more about the styling? So if you go back to your, your maestro, I noticed that you know, your components actually have styles. Like, so is that the developer's responsibility to style component before we pass it to the printable pages? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you're the the whole point is that um, hopefully, and this is not the case here, but hopefully in a lot of apps, like you're you're taking components that you have in other places in the app, and you want to maintain the exact styling and the brand that brand consistency. So you just hopefully you're getting to like pop in components you put elsewhere, and you just drop them in here. Right now, if you've built your components poorly and they are very aggressive about their width styles and they don't kind of grow to fill a container then you're going to get it's going to it's going to slap your hand you're going to it's going to look weird right mm -hmm. um, but if you've yeah. built your components to be able to kind of fill the container and you let the context own the widths of your components then you should just be able to drop them in and it's going to end up looking nice for sure yeah yeah i tried to be of course thinking about the Go ahead. Go for it. Uh, I was going to say that uh, Ember Fest, um, there's this guy in the chat. He talked about Ember Fellow as an add-on that he created. Mm. And the idea is that you can do container queries. So the, the component should know. The only thing the comp comp a component should have, need to know is how much space it has. Mm. And based on that space, it should just fill up everything. So maybe it might be, it might be nice to you know, combine your add-on with his mm. and come up with a, a really, you know, flexible printable mm -hmm. yeah yeah i tried to to inject very few styles into your app when you pull this component in you'll get like some 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 print styles that are important about um uh setting default margins and things like that for the print menu um mm. but uh it's really it's on the app developer to make it so like this settings bar or other content around the page um, is hidden in when you're in print. Uh, but I felt like it's better to have less styles come from the add-on, so. At some point you could see a, um, like an add-on that goes on top of this that like maybe builds out what the, what this looks like, like what a printable view looks like or something like that that you could, install but right now yeah yeah it's probably better to have just the lowest level primitive that you could have mm -hmm. yeah and you can you know since you just have uh <clears throat> you know blocks to render stuff into so it's pretty composable right you can drop any components you want into those sections and you're gonna you can do whatever you want, want with them so yeah i think it's great yeah Awesome. Well, thanks, Chris. Um, that was really, really cool. Um, thanks,